If you were watching Fox News on Sunday night, you may have heard Donald Trump's former attorney, a man named Jim Trustee. You may have heard him offer up a novel theory about the classified documents case against the former president. There's a lot of shenanigans in terms of grand jury usage. You know, you don't do a grand jury investigation for a year only to move it to another district unless there's more to the story. There'll be litigation, I assume, that relates to these issues of how the grand jury was used or, or abused. Uh, but it's certainly, a, a, again, new territory when DOJ shifts an investigation at the last minute to an entirely different venue. Okay, so that's Mr. Trusty floating the idea that the special counsel's use of a D.C.-based grand jury, the one that has heard this case for months, that that is somehow suspicious and that somehow prosecutors abused the use of this grand jury and that that abuse should be litigated before a judge. Now, enter Aileen Cannon, the U.S. District Judge overseeing that classified documents case down in Florida. The day after Mr. Trusty laid out that argument on Fox News, Judge Cannon issued this ruling with no prompting from Trump's defense team. She just did it on her own. Judge Cannon pointed to the prosecutor's use of an out-of-district grand jury, the one in Washington, D.C., to continue to investigate and or seek post-indictment hearings. And she deemed the use of that grand jury suspicious. Judge Cannon questioned the legal propriety of that move, and she ordered special counsel prosecutors to explain themselves by August 22nd so the issue may be litigated. Now, either there is a really unusual psychic connection between the Mar-a-Lago judge and one of Trump's former lawyers, or... Andrew, let me just first start, because you're the person that put together this, this appearance on Fox News, where Jim Trustee says, D.C. grand jury, Florida grand jury, these two things can't mix, and then Judge Cannon mysteriously coming out with the sort of mirror of that argument in one of her rulings. What's going on here? So, first... Regardless of how she got there, um, the fact of what she did is, to say the least, unusual. Um, she did it, as you noted, on her own, and it showed a fundamental misunderstanding of basic 101 criminal law yeah. as to how grand juries work, which is they can continue investigating um, ongoing crime of either an, an existing defendant or other defendants um, and, and other crimes that may be committed. So this is a classic case. It is also the case that you can bring a grand jury investigation in any district where the crime may have occurred. Remember, when you start an investigation, you don't even know if a crime has occurred or who did it or where it occurred. So you're allowed, allowed to go to many different districts where it could be the case, as long as you have a good faith basis. So this was such a fundamental misunderstanding. And what I was thinking about is, where in God's green earth is she getting, getting this stuff. idea? Because it's so off the charts from everything in the record. Why is she doing this? It's not like the litigants raised the issue. Yeah, She's doing it on her own, and it's so wrong. And then there you have Jim Trustee, the president's former president's former counsel raising, you know, this issue the night before, and that morning she issues this. So the, the, it's a real issue in terms of people who think that Judge Cannon may have learned her lesson, and this might be Cannon 2.0. She's really changed since the 11th Circuit, <laughs> Circuit struck her down twice. This suggests... Not so. Not so. This is still Cannon 1.0. Yeah, very much, or just Cannon 0.0, beta testing. <laughs>